This week, I'm taking a look at one of my favorite animation tools, Google Earth Studio. This is a really powerful browser-based animation program that's gonna allow you to create advanced animations inside of Google Earth and then export those out. It has a ton of different options. You can get really advanced with it. And if you've ever used Adobe After Effects, you're gonna be really comfortable in this program because they have very similar interfaces. However, for this particular tutorial, I wanted to create kind of an introduction to the program. I'm gonna be showing you how to use these quick start modes. So don't worry if you're a newbie, you don't have to know how to use Adobe After Effects. You don't have to know anything about animation. You don't need to know how to keyframe. I'm gonna show you how to create some animations using this program very quickly and very easily. So the first thing you wanna do is go to google.com slash earth slash studio. Right over here at the top right, it says try Earth Studio. I'm gonna click on that. Since I already have an account, it's gonna take me to the interface here. And if you are new to the program, um, you're gonna have to sign up for access. Usually takes about a day to get approved. And you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a, a Google account and you're gonna need to be using uh, the Chrome browser. And I think you have to have the latest version of Chrome and this is, as I said before, I don't know if I said it in the intro, but this is pretty intensive on the computer. And if you listen, you're gonna hear my computer. Now that I have the program open, my computer is gonna really start to rev. I can create a blank project or open an old project. Now next to the blank project button, I have a little drop down menu and there's a thing called quick starts. I'm gonna click on this. Now there are five different quick start options. And once again, you don't need any animation experience to use this. It's very, very easy. We're just gonna simply put in um, our information and then we can render it out. And I'm, I'm gonna walk you through it so you can see what each of these looks like. So first, um, we have zoom to, orbit, uh, point to point, spiral, and what else? Fly to and orbit. All right, so let's first start off with zoom to. I'm gonna click on the start button and I need to set my point of interest. It's the first thing I need to do. So I'm gonna select an area in Paris called the Sacre Coeur, it's a basilica. Um, now it takes us straight there. Now if you've ever worked with Google Earth, it's the same kind of controls here. I can click and drag to move the map around like this. I can uh, right click and drag to zoom in and out. And I can also Alt, I'm gonna hold Alt and if I click and drag, now you can see I can see this in lovely three dimensions. Very, very cool, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like this. All right, with my location selected and set up here, the position set, I'm gonna click on this arrow to go to the next step. Now I select my starting altitude. Let's say we wanna go in from right about here. It's giving us the kilometers of our altitude. I'm gonna click next. Now it automatically previews. So right off, you're seeing one thing that I, that I do not like about this program that's kind of buggy, and that's the fact that because I was moving it around, I, t I was doing the tilt. Now the animation is um, it's not doing that straight zoom in. So if you wanted to do the straight zoom in, don't uh, adjust the map at all. So, um, you know, I think they need to fix this in the next update. So let's see if I can easily fix this by going back and just reselecting. Let's see if we can select something else. And then I'll go back and select Sacre Coeur again. So be aware of that. It's a little wonky. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna pan or orbit or zoom or any of that. I'm gonna click next. Uh, same starting altitude. Now let's see how it looks. Now our animation's looking good. Oh, that's annoying. All right, now I'm gonna change the time. It's five seconds. I'm gonna set it to 10. And um, now that's a better animation. Okay, so I have my zoom in. I'm gonna click the check mark. Now it brings us to the Google Earth Studio interface. As I said, if you use After Effects, this will look very familiar. We have the timeline with the keyframes, all of our attributes over here for uh, camera position, camera target, camera rotation. I even have attributes that I can add here. Um, field of view, time of day, clouds. Uh, as I said in the intro, this can get really, really advanced. There's a ton of different options. So if you're a good animator, um, you can go pretty crazy with this. But I'm gonna leave it as is, because this tutorial is for you newbies. Now if I scrub through, I can see my animation here. I got the keyframes here. I'm not gonna touch anything. Now I can just go up and hit the render button. Now it's gonna give me this preview. It's looking good, it's a little jittery, but that's fine. So I'm gonna rename this uh, Zoom to Paris. Now I can change the number of frames here. It's zero to 300 frames. 
Um, there's also the dimensions. Let's say we want to make this 4K. So I'll quickly switch this to 4K. 3840 by 2160. Now, just below this, I have an attribute position section. This is where the Google Earth uh, little watermark is going to go. I made a, a Google Earth tutorial last year, and I got probably a thousand questions um, of how to remove the watermark. You are not supposed to remove the watermark. Um, this is available for non-commercial use. It's available for, um, you know, if you're working in news, if you're working on a documentary. Um, and also, please don't ask me for the specifics of how you can, if you can monetize your video. I don't know. I even I even um, had a Skype session with these Google Earth guys, the, the project uh, designers or managers or whoever they are, and I asked them the specific legal questions, and um, it's kind of a gray area, so um, I'm not going to have an answer for you if you ask me about the legal issues. There's no way to remove the watermark. You can just select this here, and you can select uh, the location if you want it in the top left, top right, whatever you want. There's an advanced section here. This is where if you are exporting and you want to work with this in After Effects, if I had added some tracking data, um, I can select that here and I can have it um, export in those After Effects friendly files. I'm going to be creating some more tutorials that will show you how to do this in this latest version of Google Earth Studio because it's very, very cool. You can add um, 3D motion graphics like text, um, elements, markers, labels. And I also have the texture quality set to high. That's fine. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click Start. That it will start rendering it. Now the thing about this, it's a it's a browser-based animation tool. So if I navigate to another tab of inside of Chrome, it's gonna halt this render. So you have to have the specific tab open. So let me show you what I'm talking about. It's rendering right now. Um, I'm at like frame eight, I'm almost on frame eight here. So watch what happens. I'm gonna click to another tab, and then I'm gonna click back. And it gives me uh, this warning. Uh, we have paused the render using other graphics intensive applications or changing tabs in Chrome while rendering can cause faulty renders. All right, so now my render is finished. I have this zip file here. I'm going to open this up. And here I have the Earth Studio project file. I have this uh, text file. And then I have all my images here Again, it's a JPEG sequence. So if I'm inside of Premiere Pro, I can double click here to import. I'm gonna navigate to the footage folder. And all I need to do is select the first image. And then under options, there's an image sequence uh, checkbox here. I'm gonna make sure that's selected. And I'm gonna hit import. It'll bring that in as a sequence file. And here you can see 29 frames per second um, at the 4K resolution. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new sequence here. And let's take a look at this bad boy and make sure there's no problems with it. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to go back and let's check out this second quick start option here. We have Orbit. I'm going to select Orbit. I'm going to click Start. And for all of these, I'm just going to use the same location, the Sacre Coeur. Okay, so I have the location selected. I'm not going to move the the camera around at all. I don't know if I can. And when I click the next button, it's going to automatically put me into this orbit mode. And I have four different parameters here, actually five parameters that I can adjust. First, I have the radius. Um, this is how far away from the target our camera is. And that target is going to stay locked on our location, hopefully. Wow, that is very cool. And again, not all cities are 3D, so not everything's going to look this good. The other reason this looks so good is because uh, this particular location is, I think it's one of the highest spots in Paris. So it's on this hill. So this is actually a really good shot for this, this orbit. And I think if you're just trying to create this shot um, manually inside of Google Earth Studio, even if you're kind of a seasoned animator, it can be a little bit clunky and difficult. So these quick start projects are very helpful. I'm going to go in a little bit closer. Target altitude. I don't want to change the target altitude because um, if I move that, it's going to go off of my location. I can change the camera's altitude so I could bring that a little bit lower, bring it up higher if I want. Super cool. And I can adjust the start heading, like what particular heading I want it to start at. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. 90 degrees is fine. I can switch it, have it uh, go clockwise. Does not matter. Okay, those parameters I'm happy with. I'm going to click this next little arrow here. This is the last option, which is time. Now it's rotating a little slow, so I'm going to speed it up. I'm going to like double time this, 25 seconds. 
That's looking better. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, it's added my keyframes. I'm inside of the interface here. If I want to make any manual adjustments, I can. However, uh, this is a newbie tutorial, so I am not going to make any changes. You know what I'm curious is that if this will, if this will loop, um, because it looks like it's going back to the exact same location, which would be very cool if I wanted to make um, um, a GIF or, or something. A GIF, not a GIF. All right, let's render this out. Okay, that orbit looked great. Let's do point to point now. All right, set your first point. Let's say we're going from uh, New York City. New York City. That'll be our starting point, New York City. Um, I can adjust uh, exactly how it's set up here. I'm going to leave it default. Set your second point. I think we all know where that's going to be. Secrecure. I can adjust this as well. I'm going to leave it as is. And here we see our animation. Okay, we've got our first location. We've got our second location, um, which is still editable, it looks like. And we have our time here. Let's say we want it to take 10 seconds. All right, slowed it down a little bit. Now, I created one of these animations before, and a viewer asked um, if he could match it up to this specific flight path of an airplane. He wanted it to animate in the same direction. It was going the opposite direction. And uh, I think he was having issues with that, and that it was kind of hard to do that. So there are limitations to this program. But if you just use these kind of out-of-the-box quick start projects, um, you can get some very good results here. And right, right here from within the project, I can go to File, New, and here are all my quick starts. So now I'm going to select Spiral, select my destination here. And now what this is going to do, this does a really slow fly-in with a spiral. And right here, um, on the left-hand side, you can see um, a different view of our camera our target and the motion path as well which this is a very cool way to visualize it it's going to help you a lot and there are a bunch of different parameters here for radius angle and altitude so I'm going to stick with these parameters but I am going to change the time let's change it to maybe 15 seconds it'll fly in there all right very cool Last but not least, let's do fly to and orbit. Select point of interest. There we go. Again, uh, kind of the same attributes here. We can do the end altitude, uh, orbit radius, target altitude, um, the degree of approach, so the angle. And I can change the direction from uh, counterclockwise to clockwise. I'm going to leave it at default. Make it a little bit shorter, 15 seconds. See if that flies in too quickly. It's really, really a beautiful spot. So if you ever come to Paris, I highly recommend you you uh, you visit the Sacré-Cœur. So there you have it. Those are all the quick start projects inside of Google Earth Studio. Very easy to use as long as you leave them on the defaults. Um, you don't have to have any previous knowledge of how to animate, how to keyframe. You don't need to know how to use After Effects. Um, you simply need to know how to work with those uh, image sequences. Once you export them out, you get to figure out how you can bring those into whatever editing program um, you're working with. So if you're working with anything that's even semi-professional, it should work. Like if you're working with uh, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, um, any of the heavy hitters, it's definitely going to be pretty easy. And if you like the tutorial, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, because I'm going to be publishing more tutorials on Google Earth Studio and uh, map making tutorials. I'm probably going to do some more advanced um, content on Google Earth Studio, things like how you work with After Effects because there's so many cool uh, attributes and aspects of this program, like you can add track points and then export that data, bring it into After Effects to incorporate, easily incorporate text elements and other motion graphic elements that will match up with that uh, camera that you animated inside of Google Earth Studio. Anyways, I'm babbling now, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.